What's up guys, welcome to the studio. Um, as requested on my Instagram, today I'm gonna talk about how I made a little of hope. Um, it's been a while since it's released, but yeah, I figured maybe it's nice because the summer's coming again. Um, to talk about how I made this track because I really like the vibe, it was, yeah, a nice summer vibe. That's why I started it as well. Um, but also I wanted to make kind of a transition between my old style and my new style. And uh, my old style was kind of the EDM vibe, future bounce ish at 128 BPM. And um, yeah, well, so I wanted to make a new style or produce in a new style, uh, the Dutch Urban. So between 95 and 105 BPM. And this track is 112 BPM. So it's nice in between uh, those two and yeah, I want. I was just experimenting with uh, vocal chops and kalimbas, marimbas, because I just really like that. And uh, yeah, that's why I started it. So let's dive straight into the project. All right, so we're in the project right now. Um, I want to start with the vocal chops because that's how I started this project. Um, I went to Splice, I searched for some nice vocal chops and I started with uh, this one, which you probably notice and know from the tune but it's pretty empty like this and i wanted to make a kind of a full um vocal chop melody so i used some other chops as well such as this one and then i also added some uh small ones and reversed some of them And altogether, it sounds like this. So you can see this as the lead of the drop. And um, well, they don't really have much individual processing. So some of them have echo or a little bit of reverb. Um, or this one is EQ. The rest is all, yeah, pretty standard as they come out of uh, Splice. But uh, yeah, I made a group, so it's kind of a track stack and you can put some effects on that uh, group. So then it's, yeah, it affects all of the, the different tracks that are underneath that. And I started with this uh, Nectar plugin that I use for all my vocals actually, but this was made out of vocal chop. So I figured, yeah, I could use it over here as well. So I started with just a simple EQ that's been done uh, automatically with the vocal assistant and uh, then also there's the yes service is probably just out of the vocal assistant um, yeah this this just yeah uh, ducks the harsh s sounds when they uh, when they play and then there's a second EQ and a compressor to just glue it a bit together um, then I use the kickstart which just ducks the uh, volume when the kick comes in or actually like every bar at the beginning and that's when the kick plays so yeah they don't play together it's this yeah you get that ducking sound and i like that um then i have an eq which is only used for the filtering so um just before the drop as you can hear over here the high frequencies are ducked in volume and you can see that over here and then it's automated to yeah Go back to, yeah, what it what what it's uh, what it was before without the uh, high cut, and that's when the drop comes in. Then I use another uh, compressor. This is the OTT, and this is a pretty harsh one. If you use this at one hundred percent, that's really really compressed. But I use it at twenty nine percent and also tweak the upward and downward compression knobs. So. Um, yeah, and this also glues it a bit more together, as you can hear. And then to top it off, I wanted to add another reverb for this whole thing together. And then it sounds like this. So without is this. And then. And what's nice uh, about the OTT is if you use that, it uh, most of the times it increases the high frequencies and you hear less 
low frequencies and that's what you want with a lead of course because you don't want it to interfere with the bass layer so um yeah that's how i made the vocal chops and now we're going to the supporting chords that i made let's go all right so now we're gonna have a look at the chords that i made um i made them based on the vocal chop melody that i made uh the very first so yeah, what I did is, because I don't really have any theoretical knowledge about chords, at least I'm trying to learn it right now, but uh, this was made already uh, almost a year ago. So um, yeah, what I really did was just trial and error, and then I came up with um, these chords, like that. Um, I'll play them. So that's just drawing some notes and then uh, listening, is it good? No, okay, then maybe I should uh, add another note or switch them or whatever. Um, so that's what I did. Then I made the piano melody, which is kind of the same, but then cut up and I used some other in-between notes. And then it sounds like this. And together like this. And this same uh, piano melody I use for the kalimbas and um, marimbas that I already uh, talked about. So they sound like this because they really create that summer vibe that I was looking for. So. And all together. This is actually the main component that um, supports the vocal chops. And then I also made a small arpeggiator from the uh, chords. And I just used the upper note, then the middle note, then the uh, bass note, and then, yeah. Made this melody from it. And all together, it sounds like this. And there's really not a lot of processing on these because on the piano I only use the kickstart as you can see so the volume ducks when the kick comes in um, also on here there's a kickstart and there's an EQ to only get the warm frequencies out of this uh, chord progression um, and out of this sound then I use pancake in this one which is actually I think it's a free plugin that will let you pan to the left to the right following this uh, line it just creates a stereo field and I really wanted to like create some yeah wideness in it and that's what I did with this also a kickstart then on the kalimbas I only have an EQ for the filter as you can see and nectar which is not really doing a lot there's just a basic EQ and the deesser to reduce the harshness and the, a compressor to yeah, clue them together actually uh, then on these there's an EQ to remove the lows so that it isn't like competing with the bass and also a kickstart and then yeah the same over here so uh, that's how I made the chords just a lot of trial and error and not a lot of processing So the bass, um, yeah, it's actually really simple how I made this. I just used a simple uh, sine wave from the sampler. If you load the sampler from Logic, um, then it, yeah, it's just a sine wave. And I added a sausage fattener, yes, and kickstart. So again, to duck out from the, from the kick. And yeah, just an EQ because I didn't really need the high frequencies from this sub. And it's really just a sub and nothing more. Uh, so that sounds like this. You probably don't even hear it when you're listening on a phone. So yeah, put on your headphones if you want to hear it. And the ducking of the sound, which I also used in the chorus, is really important for uh, the kick to come through better. And this is how it sounds together. So you just really make sure that they're not playing at the same time. And then this together with the vocal chops and the chord sound like this. Yeah, 
yeah but obviously this is still like not enough uh, I needed to fill it up with some more things like other instruments um, and that's what I'm gonna show right now I also uh, added just some simple loops from uh, Splice really it's not that creative I know but this was the first uh, like reggaeton uh, vibe that I all yeah that I also wanted to make so yeah um, samples that's what I used uh, I used two actually this one together with this one so you can see that there's a low cut on both of them so they don't interfere with the uh, main kick that I used and also with the bass line um, then the bass line with the kick uh, and the other instruments together sounds like this and I shouldn't forget uh, just before the drop this sample so that's a nice transition into the drop but then also I use one thing that I use in every beat I make nowadays um, actually since this track so I use uh, a sample of birds really quietly in the background I don't know if you can hear it but and why I do this is to create some depth in the mix so if you hear it on your headphones then you're like oh wait there's more behind the main thing that I know and then you can really hear the depth of the track and um, instead of everything like straight in your face that's that's the uh, thought process uh, behind it I don't know if it works but for me it works so then then I just keep it in um, yeah so that's how I made the drop I think we already have everything now and it sounds like this. Okay, let's go to the next part. All right, so now I explained the drop, but not the whole drop because um, halfway through the drop, then the format of the vocal chops changes that's what I automated and you can hear it over here and like it goes down and that's what I did with the uh, nectar right here so you can see here the foreman is yeah it started with just as it is always and then it goes down to minus 3.6 and that's how I created that yeah change in tone actually So it's still the same samples and same processing, uh, except for the uh, format shift that's taking place. Um, yeah, so that's that's the whole drop actually, and there's also a pre-shifted clap coming in. And the rest is all the same. Um, but yeah, so I also use the chords obviously in the break, and they're kind of the same. Um, however, I don't use the kickstart on them here because there's no kick, so there's no ducking of volume needed. Uh, yeah, so that's this one. And also the kalimbas. I use them as well in the breakdown, but not with that like very dynamic melody, just like this. So yeah, pretty simple. Um, altogether it sounds like this and then together with the bird sound and then also the vocal chops are in the break as well I, I think they fill it up really really well um, but yeah they shouldn't be that present because otherwise the drop is not that special anymore you know so um, yeah I put an EQ on that and automated the uh, high cut So you can hear it's being filtered right now. So you still hear them, but they're not that present. So yeah, that, that goes along like this. And then I, at some point, introduce the uh, rhythm again. But also 
filtered so it's not that present but it's at least it's there yeah and that then just goes ahead and then uh, you get to the second drop and then in the end of the second drop you like build it off kind of and um, yeah make it a bit simpler and so that people know that the end is coming um, so yeah that's that's actually the whole instrumental part and now I'm gonna talk a little bit about how I process, process the vocals and how I came up with the vocals. All right, so the vocals, the very last part, they are also the things that I added at the very last. So uh, the whole beat was actually done and then I was looking for uh, the vocal, which is a vocal from Splice, um, again. And uh, what I did to this was, um, the original sounds like this. Uh, let me put it back. Yeah. Sometimes I feel the loneliness inside me. Yeah. I could... So it was actually one semitone down, and I yeah pitched it up, so it fitted the key of the track. So then it sounds like this. Then I added the Nectar plugin, which I already said I use this on every vocal. Um, so an EQ, the Esser, another EQ, then a compressor, and a kind of really small, I think, yeah, really small delay and really small uh, reverb. And then I also added the channel EQ over here. I thought that was a harsh frequency that I wanted to get rid of, so that's what I did. Um, so yeah, that's that's actually the main part of the vocal. Sometimes I feel the loneliness inside me, yeah. But then I thought it was a bit too thin, so I added two backing vocals. But yeah, what I did to these two was I adjusted the timing a little bit, like very, very little bit. And um, I also changed the format of both uh, backing vocals. So this one sounds like this. And then we have this one. And I did this uh, exactly the same way as I did with the vocal chops, just uh, nectar, pitch, correction, form, and, and one is uh, three up and the other is three down. And together it sounds like this. So yeah, then it sounded like a bit fuller and that's what I wanted to achieve with this vocal. Um, actually in the second part, the vocal is exactly the same. Um, but the vocal is a little bit longer than I used in the first break. Um, so I just used the full vocal in the second break and only a part of the uh, vocal in the first break. And most people don't even notice that it's actually the same uh, thing that you're hearing. Uh, also because the breaks are a bit different. But uh, yeah, they're just the same. And um, yeah, that's it. So now we have the full track. I hope you learned a lot. And um, yeah, I wanted to say one one more thing, one really short thing about the mastering because it's really easy. Uh, in this one, I just used uh, Ozone. And yeah, used the master system, it did it for me. I tweaked a little bit uh, on the maximizer as I always do. The other parts I usually don't even touch. And um, Nowadays I also use uh, Soothe, but I didn't have the plugin when I made this, but Soothe is really nice because it um, finds the harsh uh, frequencies or the frequencies that are not that nice to hear and they reduce them uh, or it reduces them automatically. Uh, so yeah, usually you use an EQ to carve out all the things like I did um, in this vocal, but then it just does it for you. And um, yeah, that's what I use on all my masters now actually together with an ozone and um, yeah that's really it so I hope you liked it and um, let me know which track I need to deconstruct the next time see ya bye